All right, everybody, I'm coming to you live right here at Luby's Cafeteria, right here on the corner of Post Oak and Belford. And I got a good friend of mine that I've been knowing. Dog, how long, man? We, we go all the way back to Miller, don't we? Uh, yeah, Miller Junior High School, man. And I got Alan Dole, Jack class of 1966. Is that right, Alan? Yes, sir. And I'm so glad that you could come out here and join us here at the Jack Yates Men of Valid. Uh, this is the first time we're doing a luncheon. We used to have the breakfast. Okay, okay. But due to the fact that Luby's are closed okay. uh, on uh, now for breakfast, so we had to move it up from 9 o'clock until 11 o'clock. Okay. So still a breakfast, we're having lunch now. Right, right. And I'm so glad to you see to come out here in the rain and to come out here and not only support the Jack Yates Men of Valid, yes, but sir. also support the Jack Yates High School. Yes, sir. And I thank you so much, Alan, for coming out here and giving your time. And uh, and what's your sister name, Alan? Yeah, Cynthia, Cynthia Dog. And uh, uh, we used to call her Duck. And uh, you know, now how many of your family that went to Yates? Uh, I think I'm the only one. You're the only one out of Jack Yates, and we really appreciate you. And one 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 of the quick question, Alan, what what was the elementary school that you came from? J. W. Jones. J. Will Jones. J. Will Jones. Thank you so much, Alan. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thanks for the donation. You know, it's so good, Fred, because, you know, we talk about the Turkey Day Classic and the young people. Who, now, let me just show you what the young people have done since they've been looking at all the videos that we have been putting together on the Jack Gates classes. They have came together and bought the classes of the 80s and the 90s mm -hmm. of not only Jack Gates, in fact, I would give you a mask that I'm wearing now, a Jack Gates mask. I would love to have. And see, the thing about it, these masks come from Phyllis Wheatley. No kidding. And we have took a thousand masks over there to Phyllis Wheatley. Oh, man, that is great. I and mean, the guy who's sponsoring this is a, a guy out of Phyllis Wheatley. He's on a company that's called True Game. And True Game is just like Nike, but his company is up in Ohio. You know, and he giving us all these nice shirts like this mm -hmm. and also these masks and what we did we gave a thousand masks to Wheatley and Wheatley gave us a thousand masks oh okay so we exchanged them that is wonderful and then we coming in with Booker T Washington this year that that is great and we bring in the three original black schools okay coming back together that is wonderful, man. You guys are doing a good job. Keep it up, man. Keep and that I just want to let going. you know this. And Keep I that. want to thank you so much. You're welcome. And Hold keep on. it going. Keep it going, man. Don't let it stop. Oh. We, we need to be grounded like that. Oh, okay. thank you so much, Fred. All right, All right everybody. We're live right here at Luba's Cafeteria. And I got uh, my main man. He look at everything that I post out there on Facebook. I knew him when he was a little bitty boy. Mr. Chris Daniels, the son of Coach Raymond Daniels. The grandson of Dr. Bowie, the son of Miss Sally Bowie. This man got history, y'all, and I'm so glad that he are here today to share it with all of us. Glad to be here. And you know, glad Chris, I'd like to say thank you so much for all your time you're coming out here and spending with us here at the Jack Gates Men of Valor. And uh, Chris, uh, let's go, uh, you, you bought some things over here. Kind of explain some of the things that you bought over here, Chris. Okay, uh, I'm gonna start off with some of the things that, you know, my dad used to, uh, teach uh, swimming over at the Y. He had actually received uh, a uh, award from the YMCA for uh, a man of the year. That's just one of the one of the awards. Another award he received was from uh, the American Red Cross and for outstanding service with regards to teaching uh, numerous numbers of people how to swim. Everybody that has ever heard his name should know that he was one of the first uh, WSIs here in Houston and uh, worked with uh, Johnny Means over there with their swim team uh, in, in different uh, capacities. So the thing is that, you know, I'm glad that, to be a part of this. Uh, I have some, uh, some uh, his letters that he had received in track and swimming as well as uh, Another award he received from the uh, Prairie View Interscholastic Coaching Association. I think that was in 2014 or 2011. And uh, there's a uh, museum that has all of the uh, coaches as well as athletes that have out done outstanding service back in that era. So, I mean, once they get that back uh, started again, um, you know, you're going to hear from uh, Boo about where that location is. So you can go see it. 
All right, you know, Chris, it's so good to see you come out here. And you know, you talk about all the things that your daddy had accomplished, Chris. It's amazing because coming from Coach Raymond Daniels, he the one who helped organize swimming and taught people how to swim like Johnny Means and Thurman Robbins. You know, and Thurman Robbins, Dr. Thurman Robbins, he part of the, the Turkey Day Classic Yes. book that he put together yes and he's a great swimmer yes. and then we talk about Johnny Means and you know Johnny Means had did so much for Houston because he learned everything from your dad and now the county along with El Franco Lee from Phyllis Wheeler 1958 1968 had put together before he passed a Johnny Means aquarium pool and we are fighting so hard today to make that aquarium pool after Jack Yates we want to try to name it after your dad, man. Because your dad have did so much, not only to the people at Jack Gates, but to the whole Third Ward area. And like you say, the YMCA. He was there at the start. He was there at the start with, with before uh, before uh, it, swimming became really, um, you know, um, important to, for people. So the thing is that I think that we need to try to learn how to look back on some of our history and reflect on that and how we can make a better a, a future for everybody. And you know it's so good to know this, Chris, because a lot of people don't realize what went on in the past will come back in the future. That's correct. Life is repeating itself. And it's so good to know that you have came out here to help support the Jag H men of Valley. I know I'm so happy to have you, and I was part of your dad's swimming team of the 1964 all the way to the 1967 swimming team. Something to be proud of. For and really? I am so happy that I had a chance to know your dad. Yeah, yeah. And I also know how good, not only as I found out as I got up some age, that your daddy was an outstanding running back for Jack Gates. Yeah. They used to call him the cannonball because yeah. he was so short and he was so strong running the football for Jack Gates under Coach Pat Patterson. That's correct. And that's why Coach Pat Patterson put him up under his arm and put him in as a son to him. And he got to be the coach for the B team of Jack Gates. Mm -hmm. And that is so good, man. And I want to talk to you some more, Chris. Okay. Because you got so much history, man. You know, we were talking when I was with Felicia Allen. Rashard. And Felicia was telling me that your granddad is the one who bought her in the world. <laughs> yeah. Over there at Riverside Hospital. Probably. Yeah, well, then it was that Negro General Hospital uh -huh. at that time. Uh -huh. Which later on in your generation, in 65, they changed it over to Riverside. Yeah. But to know that your grandfather, Dr. Bowie, bought in everybody in the Allen family, from Tex Allen to Felicia Allen to Deborah Allen. And we all, and this is just the history of just your grandfather, man. Yeah. And a lot of people didn't even realize about your mother, Sally Bowie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she had That's, a dance studio. What yeah. do you think Debbie Allen learned how to dance? Yeah, yeah she basically started teaching uh, children from 5 to 15, most of them learning about modern dance, ballet, tap, things like that, and theater. I mean, that's given a, a start to, if they want to pursue that in the future, they have a foundation for it. But you got to be exposed to different things. You know, just like you got to be exposed to learn how to swim, it's an important uh, thing in life. It's a fear that people need to determine that they're ready to accomplish and get over it if they want to learn. Because uh, there are people like myself that are out there, we're willing to show you how it's done at any time, any place. You know, if you said right now, let's go get in the pool, I got chunks and goggles in my in my car right now, so I don't play. You know, and it's so good, you know, and we talk so much uh, 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 about this, Chris, because these are things that you didn't know because I had to find out later. Right. That see, Debbie Allen and Felicia, that they was all our neighbors in Tex Allen. That's correct. See, and they had, they stayed on that corner of you and an Alameda. And across the street from them, it was a dance studio called Fred Astaire. <laughs> and see, Fred Astaire did not like black folks coming into their place. They, they forbidden blacks to even look at their place. So Debbie Allen had no other choice but to come way over there to your mom's studio to practice dancing. And that is the Sally Bowie studio. Yeah, and there are a lot of people that have been through there. They may, they may have only briefly went through there, but they, they, they did participate. They know her name and they knew exactly where that place was on, to Wester and uh, Rosewood on the corner, 4001. And you know it's so good to know it too because 
is so many. It was the only black studio where young black females could learn how to dance. Yeah, that's true. I mean, and, it, and it was right down that corner of Chowester and Rosewood. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There, there are a lot of people that, that would tell me, they say, oh, yes, sir. I remember your, uh, your mom. She, she taught me some, 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 some new steps and some, uh, new, new ways of looking at music and dance. I mean, and that's, that's all about opening your eyes and, and learning uh, something different, you know, and being, being ready to be open-minded towards things. So that's, that's the whole thing that, that, that my family has been uh, a part of. And I wanted to acknowledge that and let people understand uh, what kind of person that I am. Because a lot of times you see a mask and people walking around and don't say anything. You don't know, you don't know what their experiences and backgrounds are. So it's always good to open your mouth and speak and, 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 and get some knowledge about that. And you know, it's so good, uh, Chris, that you come around because see, this is the way your mom and dad raised you. See, you never forgot where you came from. That's you could have been up there with these other hostility people, but you stayed on the grassroots level where your friends could recognize you. That's and we all patronize you and respect you for what you've done. And I appreciate it too. And well, we appreciate you yeah. because it's, it's not very many guys like you that come from a background like you, that stay black. And it's all about giving back, really. I think so. Whatever that you, that you know you're capable of doing, you can give back to your people, you should. And that's what, that's what I feel like. I'm, I, I've, I've gotten to the point in my life now that that's what I want to be able to do. And I right, everybody, I got Mr. Chris Daniels, the son of Coach Raymond Daniels. And Chris, you got all this, uh, all this is legend and history. Kind of explain us, Chris. What is this one we're looking at right here, Chris? All right, uh, right here I have a uh, award that my dad received in 1968 for the Swimming Coach of the Year, and uh, what year was that? Of 1968. All right, and then what we got over here? Okay, we have some pictures of him when he was in Germany in the military, and I believe that his uh, job in the military was actually to instruct swimming because blacks at that time were not taught how to swim. But this is a picture of him actually swimming in Germany, uh -huh. diving off the diving board. I think this is one of his high school pictures right here that he had where he was all uh, GQ'd up. All right. Uh -huh. And um, what I have over here, again, is some of his uh, pictures that he, when he played football, he was one of the uh, running backs. Over there, he, and mm -hmm. Jack Yates, right? Yeah, part of the, uh, part of the Ye Yates Turkey Day Classic. All right. As a matter of fact, I remember uh, someone that I worked with at one time that told me that uh, he was playing defense with him one time, and he, he, uh, he could hear the hit that, that he had made on the on the on the on the player and tackled him. It was like you could hear it in the stands. He hit him that hard. Wow! I'm so telling you. What we got over here? All right. Well, we have some uh, some other information about him when he was ever at uh, in in his uh, graduate years. He uh, pledged Kappa. Okay. I didn't even know that until after he passed away. His Yates. Uh, Yates, um, uh, his uh, letters track? ran track all right. as well as he got a letter in swimming. Uh huh. All right, some other Yates uh, memorabilia okay, over here. What is this red hand with the with the him? Okay, this is right here. This this award was uh, given to him by the Red Cross. Okay, and I believe it was in the 19 uh, late 50s. Okay. But basically, that's for outstanding service because if everybody knew him, he was over there teaching swimming over at Emancipation Park back in that day, teaching a large number of people to swim. I had another person tell me that he even took someone he taught how to swim to Galveston when they opened up a city pool one day. And the man remembers my dad from doing that. Okay, now, uh, 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 this is when your, when your dad was running track for Yates? Yes, I think that, you know, that was way before my time. Oh, yeah, that, oh, yeah your dad finished, your, your dad finished uh, Yates in 1948. I was, that's when I was born. Yeah, so it was just well, before yeah, the 50s. Before your time. Yeah. I got okay. another one over here from the YMCA that he was working with. Young and he men. helped open up the YMCA. The one on Wheeler, South Central Y, Man of the Year, 1968 again. That was the year. So, so he said some, 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 uh, some work with the Y, um, as well as uh, working with the city as well. One of my favorite and the best uh, awards that he had received here was from the Prairie View Interscholastic League Coaching Association from Robert Brown. Okay, basically this is just to acknowledge his his service as a uh, coach. And you know what, and the thing about it, that the Prairie View Interscholastic League was the all-black league because we couldn't play in the white league, which is the Interscholastic League. But it's all good because 
we are still recognized as the Interscholastic League because they are getting all our Purview League statistics together and they putting it all together up in Austin. Thanks to Coach Brown to put this together. And you know, and we thank you so much, Chris, for all the time you spent with us today. Thank and we enjoyed every minute of it. You know, I'd like to thank all the guys who came out and helped contribute to the Bully production. You know, it really made me feel good to know that they enjoy it. And for you guys out there that lives on the West Coast, such as Mr. Walter Suds, Mr. Leon Richardson, and for all the brothers that live out there in Arkansas, Mr. Danny Armstrong, my cousin, William Skull Harvey, Jack Yates class of 1960, and also Mr. Danny Armstrong, Jack Yates class of 1965, Russell Richardson, Jack Yates class of 1966, and also Mr. Walter Surge, Jack Yates class of 1966. They came through for Boo Lee, man. They contributed something, and I'd like to thank Mr. Allen Dahl, Mr. Fred, Mr. Jerry Shepard, and a few more other guys who came in and contributed this to keep this broadcast going on. Thank you guys so much. It really means a lot to me because now I can afford to be able to, to cover more events that we have in the Jack Gates Men of Valley. Thank you. God bless you. It's been a good lunch in here, Lubis. And we also had the city council lady in this district, Miss Martha Tatum. Uh, and uh, she treated us pretty good, Carolyn. You know, we from Jack Yates, we from District D. And we were so glad to come over here in District K with Miss Martha Tatum. She welcomed us in over here. She and made sure that we was okay, Carolyn. She treated us with nothing but respect. But you know, that's how Martha is. That's why she is the city councilman in District J. And that's District K, y'all. Edward, I'm sorry about that, Mr. Edward Pauley. But this is Miss Martha. She treated us so good, Carolyn, to let you know that Martha take care of us, Jack Yates men. Thank you.